One of the questions that pops up continually in the low content publishing niche is how to turn an image, be it a picture, a piece of clip art or an illustration, into a lined drawing for colouring books. So I'm going to show you a quick way to do just that using Affinity Photo, along with a hack to make this whole process a piece of cake. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables, and I create videos for this channel around low content publishing and printables for Etsy or similar platforms. And if that's the kind of thing that interests you, then click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And if you find this video helpful, then please do click on the like button, which will help get this video seen and help me grow this channel. I really do appreciate it. I have found some images here that I think will make some pretty good colouring pages. Some are from the Heritage Library public domain site, some are from Creative Fabrica, and others I've picked up from the likes of Pixabay and other free commercial usage lists. Remember to always check the commercial usage rights before you use the image. And I'll leave the links below of some of the sites I use. I've picked a range of images, as you can see. Some with backgrounds and some without, so you can see the difference in how they come out. It has to be said that images with darker backgrounds and dark colours will not work as well as ones with light colours. And I've picked one with some very dark tones so you can see uh, what I mean when I say that. In the main, I find this works best with PNG images, that is transparent backgrounds, with clip art rather than photos, though it does depend on the photo because the process relies on the definition between light and dark to create the lines. I'm going to run through each of these images and change them to illustrations so you can see the end result and then I'll run through the exact process. So here we go. So that one I showed you just now. You can see that this is not a difficult process once you've got it down pat. And you can also see how quickly I've just run through something like 10 images. This last one was the darker tones and it doesn't work as well you've still got a fair bit of grey in there, which you, you could play around with and take out. But all the rest work really well. This one in particular I like, as well as the sunflower pattern. Make a great background page for colouring. And these others are really great for pulling into amalgamations of different bits of graphics in your colouring books. With Easter coming up, these gnomes would be brilliant. And these are some Japanese images, as you can see. OK, I've taken all the images back to their original colours. And now I'll go through the process with you step by step. First off, in this image, I'm going to crop it down because I don't want this background. So we use the crop tool at the top here, or you can press C and you just literally crop the lines down to where you need them within the image. In my case, I want them just inside the frame because I don't want that frame to turn up. And then press return and that fixes it. And the other thing I don't particularly want, and I will cover uh, this particular tool in another video, but I don't particularly want the artist's signature down in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to use Photos Fabulous in Painting tool, which is over here on the left hand side and it's J for the shortcut to choose In Painting Brush Tool. And literally just brush over the bit I do not want. And the magic of Affinity Photo means it will take out any bits I don't want and leave it exactly as if it wasn't there. There's also a little dark spot I don't want just there. 
You can use that tool to run through various images and take out bits that perhaps you don't want in there. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer. So make sure the layer is selected and it is because it's the only one and you can press Control J which will duplicate it and it will leave the last the bottom layer locked that way you don't damage the the original or you can go up to layer and just choose duplicate. Step number two is to click on the duplicate layer and then choose the adjustment icon down the bottom which is this one that is black and white and we're going to choose HSL and then we're going to take the saturation which is the second one down all the way down to zero which takes the color out of the picture. We can now close that we don't need it. Then on the right hand side under your layers panel make sure you have the layer that you're working on selected not the adjustment layer for step three which is to choose the blend mode which is this one here where it says normal and change that to color dodge. Step number four is to press Control I which will make the picture entirely white as you can see or possibly with a slight uh, grayish tinge depending on the tones of the image. Step number five then you go to the top menu and choose layer and you will go to new live filter layer, blur and then Gaussian blur and if you slide the radius across you will see a faint outline start to appear. So you can slide this as far as you wish, take it all the way across to bring your image back, round about four, five in this instance most images will appear about the right sort of level at that point. And you can improve on that image by clicking on the right hand side on the HL, HSL shift adjustment layer. Double click and it will bring up these levels again and you can play around with these levels to adjust how this image appears. Close that when you're done. And you can save the image at this point or you can flatten it. Now I generally flatten it so I will select all the layers and then come to layer and go merge selected and then you will just have the one layer which will appear as a better image I find and then just file export as either a JPEG or a PNG. A JPEG is pre usually preferable here uh, and export it to where you need it. You can also preview it so you can see what it's going to look like when it comes out. Not bad for what's a pretty quick process but we can speed that up even more. Affinity Photo unlike its uh, brothers and sisters of publisher and designer has macros like uh, Adobe does and so if we go through that process again but this time we record what we've done. So we'll choose another image and in this instance I don't particularly want the, the Chinese images, uh, sorry the Chinese characters here. So again I will use the inpainting tool and take them out and it will blend the background to um, make them disappear. I love that tool. We will then choose uh, the macro and if you can't see macro then you will go to view studio and check down here and make sure it is ticked so you have it open. Ma the macros are very simple in photo they are literally just record stop or play. You can save them and that's the beauty of what we're going to do. So we'll run through that process once again and this time we'll press the start recording under the macro tab. Press Control J to duplicate the layer, make sure we have that layer selected. We'll go to the adjustments and choose HSL and take the saturation all the way down to zero. Close that, we do not need it. 
make sure you have the right background layer selected. Now this comes up when you're recording, so you select the layer below and say select and you'll see that that moves down to the correct layer. Then we change normal, the normal blend down to color dodge and then we press control I to invert the colors. And then last step, we go to uh, the top menu and choose layer, new live filter layer, blur and Gaussian blur and adjust the radius until the image you are happy with appears, which will be about that. And if this doesn't work on images afterwards, once you've recorded the macro, it doesn't matter. You can go back and alter it. So we will close that and stop the macro. Now at this stage you need to save this otherwise it'll be lost. So if you come up here to the little squares where it says add to library, give it a name and you can choose categories as well if you have them but uh, just add that to your library. Now you'll see I've already got one so I've now got a second one. And where I merged the layers, I did exactly the same thing uh, for another macro. So I have literally only got two steps, two, two buttons to press or two, two processes to press for each image that I wish to convert to a black and white sketch. So if I flip through all of these and show you in real time exactly how long each of those will take now that we've recorded the macro to do the job for us. Creating sketches done on each one. And I promise you this is not edited, this is exactly how fast I did it. The only other thing you need to do, if you're going to record a macro to merge the layers, as I have done here, you do have to select the layers first. If you don't do that, you will have the error of having to choose the right layers each time, as, as you saw. It's not an error, but it's a, a query on the macro each time. So it isn't worth trying to record that. So if you select them and press merge layers, it will do that on each one. So we can now go through and merge the layers. Oops. I think this one works really well. I use a pen and tablet instead of a, a mouse and sometimes the actions don't uh, pick up as well as they should. Okay, all done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve images done in less than 12, 13 minutes can't be bad. So you can see you can create, as long as you've got all your images together and you're happy with the selections, you can create images for a colouring book a lot quicker than if you were drawing them yourself. They're not exact lined drawings, but they're pretty darn close. So I hope you found that useful. I've been Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.